Hey everyone, this is Malthus. Uh, this, welcome to the first episode of Neverwinter Nights 2. Uh, the whole goal of this episode is to get a character set up and kind of a small backstory made and maybe an explanation of what's going to happen. Uh, so, for those of you who are not, you know, introduced to Neverwinter Nights 2, it's a D&D role-playing game uh, with a set story called... The official campaign. Not very creative. As you can see, the other ones are kind of more creative, and uh, we might get to those later. But the first one is my favorite. And uh, let's get started, shall we? So we're going to create a character. Um, what I've decided is that I really want to go with something kind of um, mellow. And not average, but uh, a little different than usual. You know, most people play as like a fighter or a glass cannon. So what I decided is to go with a human. Do my height. Kind of a big guy. There's a particular face I like. That one. See, he's got like a beard. Like, like a normal beard. Okay, so. Just kind of normal hair. We're going to give him... Blue eyes, because reasons. We're gonna give him slightly paler skin. We're gonna give him kind of a cayenne peppery salt look at thing. It'll work out. Okay, so this is what I was gonna do. Normally, people go with fighter, like I said, or wizard, but I was thinking cleric. Here's why I'm thinking cleric. It's a great support class that has both offensive and defensive spells and can melee. Which means that I'll have the bonus of being able to use spectacular looking spells and have the ability to actually fight in combat and not have to just sit there if I run out of spells. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, lawful good just because, you know, whatever. Personally, I always do Torm. He's, uh, he's basically the god of paladins. As you can see, duty, loyalty, obedience, and paladins. Now, it doesn't really matter which god you pick, because as long as you pick within your alignment, everything works out fine. Uh, not all the gods are listed because I chose a certain alignment. All the ones that are evil, or all the ones that are chaotic, don't show up. Uh, we're just going to use recommended, because we need strength, we need constitution, and we need wisdom. And charisma is always good for your leading character. Uh, I don't really care to have one of these. I need diplomacy, because I'm a good character, so I'm going to use it a lot. Um, but I do want this fortitude right here. Kind of like I want... Where's that? If I could find it. Wow, oh, okay. So if I was a bully, I'd get one to intimidate, which I don't use. Because those usually lead to bad decisions. And a fortitude save, which I'll tell you why those are important here in a minute. But I would lose. You know, bluff, not that important, but diplomacy sure is. So we're going to go with nothing right now. We're going to customize. Okay, so we're going to do concentration, which is important. Diplomacy. And heal. The reason I'm not doing lore, which is usually a really important one, is because I will always have a spellcaster in my group. And I'm going to pump the hell out of that on them. And I don't, use, I don't really like crafting in this game, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, so as a human I get an extra feat, so I have two. Currently I have the only weapon proficiencies I need, along with armor proficiency. I'm going to go with the heaviest armor I can, and a spear, which I'll explain why when we get there. Okay, so right now I can turn spells into heals, and I can turn undead. Not bad. 
we're gonna pick up that thing combat casting there we go and we're also gonna pick up uh, See, that's not, I mean, it's it's only two points, so I don't really want that right now. I'm doing more of a combat guy who can cast spells if needed. Uh, this is a really important part for picking a cleric. Um, there are tons of different ways you can customize a cleric. So, like, you can pick trickery, and you get faint, which is good if you're going to be, like, a uh, just damage dealer and not have any ability to tank. And you get spells depending on what what domain you pick so what I went through I chose a couple different ones to look at um, magic is really good because you can see it increases your spell book which is really important later on and it increases it by giving you all these spells to be able to cast you know when you get to this level which matters. Luck, really good. One to all saves, important, and one to AC. That's really good in game when you've already got like the best armor and uh, you're not using any of your dex modes because you're using that armor. Every AC counts. However, I don't really like the spells that you get, so I'm not going to do that one. Another one is healing. It makes all of your healing spells empowered. Now, this would be really good in one of the other campaigns where you get to choose all four of the members of your first party, but because this is my main character and I want him to be able to like survive on his own, I'm going to give him knowledge, and what that does is it gives me knock. Knock is one of the most important things in the game because it lets you not have a rogue in your party. Same thing with identify, not as important. But what it does do is it lets you save money by not having to spend all your money on identify items. So we're going to grab that one. And now I need to have damage dealing school. Um, a lot of people like fire because it gives you fireball. Fireball is a really good spell. However, once again, I'll have a sorcerer or a wizard with me the whole game. Uh, and then a lot of people also like strength or sun. They both give you good spells. Um, or war. Now, I don't need war. War's great thing is that you can get a specialized feat. Okay? It basically lets you take whatever weapon your god likes and make it a weapon proficiency for you, even if it's, you know, exotic or a martial weapon that you just don't have the ability to use normally. So, there's that. I don't need that. I'm just gonna use spears. Uh, travel's also nice. Not a damage one, it's just kind of just kind of cool. Haste is really good. Uh, evil is good for damage. Because Edward's Black Tentacles make people uh, lose their dex bonus on their AC. So you can actually hit them. Fury is obviously good. Destruction is obviously good. But I'm going to choose Animal. And I have a very specific reason for choosing Animal. It gives me Cat's Grace, which is good for uh, gaining decks not on me but on a ranger class i'm going to use as soon as i get one in my party and to give it to my fighter until i get him heavy enough armor that he no longer needs dexterity and also i get an animal companion i've always been kind of like a softy for having an animal companion it's like it's like cheating and having an extra person in your party so we're gonna hit next and i get to choose my animal so we have a small selection. Let's start with the worst. Panther. If I was going to do a stealth character, I would do a panther, I guess. They've got the most average of the stats. Literally average. Like, nothing special. So we're not doing that one. Giant Spider. Lowest HP. Good damage. Not resilient at all. Low AC. But they do have a dex or a strength poison that makes your opponents weak and you can like shift him from person to person and he'll just kind of go around and poison everyone so it's not bad 
Wolf. Wolf is uh, pretty good damage. Better than Panther, obviously. But it's just not great, stats-wise. It does have the ability to knock down, which is only good if you're able to micromanage it. And I don't really care to micromanage. Badger is the berserker of the animal kingdom, I guess. Honey badgers just don't give a fuck. I mean, look at this thing. It's tiny, but it's gonna fight anything. It can cast Fury, making it um, more powerful melee for a little while. And it can do that a couple of times a day as it levels up. But that's it's only good when it th uh, furies. So we've got brown bear and boar left. Brown bear, highest damage, great AC, good life. Boar, great life, like best, great AC, good damage. So I think I'm going to choose boar because it will be a good intermediary tank for when uh, the main tank I use, Kelgar, is either incapacitated or not in the party. It's basically just always having that that thing you you can really rely on. So Giles, my boar. We're going to go ahead and do random characters. We're going to do Malthus. Use him for no reason. Character's gonna be 32. See, the only problem with this is my character being 32 doesn't make a whole lot uh, of sense because, as you see in the story, we're like a foster child and we're still living with our father. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump that down to 23. And let's pick a boy, shall we? Attack! Ugh, gross. Attack! Kill them now! Wow. To the fight, my friends! Whoa. Attack! By my direction, attack! To your weapons! And don't let up! Attack! Attack! I say <laughs> attack! <laughs> Some of these voices are just terrible. Their time has come. No. Once more into the breach, my friends! Uh. Now you shall taste my power! <laughs> Attack! Leave no one standing. There we go. Okay, let's get to it. So many years ago today. Ah, my foster son is up and dressed, I see. Today is the High Harvest Fair, and the West Harbor Village Council requires me to man the archery competition. The Damn right. need to celebrate Remembrance Days baffles me, but at least something productive may come of it. The merchant Galen is here. He'll want my furs as he usually does. Coins can be useful in getting by. This past season has been a hard one for both tilled fields and wildlands. While I attend to the archery contest, I will need you to deal with the merchant. Fetch my furs from the chest over by the painting. Okay, so I'm not going to do the tutorial because it's a pain in the butt. And this game is pretty straightforward. So, I'm sorry. Okay. West Harbor's annual harvest festival finally winds down late in the evening. Flushed with the victory of claiming the harvest cup with your friends, Bevel and Amy. You were the center of the attention at the uh, evening's festivities before finally slipping away for some much needed rest. You look forward to a good night's sleep and a late morning, but sometime in the dark night, you are awakened by a strange noise. Let's see what's going on. Number one. This game is ridiculously long, by the way. The village is under attack. Oh no! The harbor is under attack. You're safe. Grab a weapon. We need to help defend the village. What's going on? I'm not sure. They came pouring in from the swamp and started tearing the village apart. Oh, we shit. hurry. I saw some of them following us on our way here. They're likely to hit this house next. Where's my equipment? It's in that chest next to your bed. You keep everything in there, remember? Hurry up and arm yourself. Obviously, I didn't remember the red eye. The more we put the village at risk. Okay. So, 
here's my plan. We've spent quite a while making a character. So I'm going to level up all my guys, show you kind of how the leveling process works, and explain to you my intentions going forward, and then we'll end it here for the episode. So let's start with Bevel. He's a fighter. Uh, secondary characters who can't really customize their class at all, they just kind of start where they are. I don't really care about his skills, he's not in the game for very long. What I do care about is that he gets power attack. Okay, and now that he has power attack, he can have cleave. Cleave is really good because it makes basically any time you kill somebody in combat, you get a free hit on anybody within range. So those are his two levels. His stats are terrible. He's not smart. He's not wise. He's the kind of guy that would buy a lemon from a used car lot. Okay, now this bitch. She's smart. Very low life. She's a wizard. Don't care. Spells. So see, this is how spells work. For people who have to pick them. Um, she gets a certain amount of spells. And she gets to cast a certain amount of them per day. So we're going to give her ones like uh, Lesser Orb of Acid to do direct damage. She also has Magic Missile, but doesn't do as much damage. And we're going to give her Grease, because Grease is awesome. Makes people fall down. Same thing, same thing. We're going to give her Combat Casting. It's really important to have that on a caster, because if they ever get overwhelmed, they can turn on defensive casting, and it gives them a bonus to being able to complete spells with people around them. Okay, we get some level 2 spells. Two of them. So we're going to get a couple of my favorite. Cloud of Bewilderment. Makes people just not know what's going on. And if I were going to keep this character for long term, I'd get her Knock. Because Knock is like the best spell in the game. Non-combat, that is. Uh... For right now, we'll just grab her. Uh, bust, I guess. Okay. Now to the important character. Mwah. Before we do that, let's grab some stuff. Here's the inventory system. Pretty basic. Got my paper doll here. Take that. Take that. They also give me a ranged weapon, which I'm not going to use. And uh, I could use both hands on this mace if I wanted to get a small damage bonus. Uh, but I'll go ahead and use the shield because I'm not exactly tough right now. And there's Giles. Hello, Giles. Okay, so let's level up. So before we go anywhere on this, I'm a cleric right now. But I don't want to stay a cleric forever. So eventually, I've looked over all the prestige classes and I've decided probably the most fun to watch is Stormlord. So it's a cleric or a shaman who focuses on damage using lightning. Uh, this is why I'm picking Spear. I have to have Toughness, Great Fortitude, Spear, okay, and I have to be able to cast third level Divine Spells. Not a big deal. I'll get this in time. Um, I will pick this up, I think, either this level or the next. And I will start to work on these other ones. This comes in time, too. What this does is it lets me use a spear and have even more damage by enchanting my spear with lightning. But it also lets me keep gaining spells, so I get to cast more and more powerful spells. But that's for later on. So for right now, we're just going to grab another uh, another rank of Cleric. Concentration. Diplomacy. And heal. Okay. Every time I level up, my um, pet disappears. So i got to resummon him. He just gets stronger. That's all it is. Okay. So we are going to look at what's things we can get. We can get toughness. Oh, I already have toughness. Uh, we can get a 
weapon focus and spear, which will take us one step closer. Um, like, I don't need these at all, because I'm going to be using two-handed weapon. That is normal. Like, I don't even need these. So that's cool. I'm going to need to get this eventually. Uh, the cool thing about this was like, it'll get me really close to having the necessary fortitude saves without having to really work at it. But for right now, we're going to pick up probably spear. That way, the first chance I get, I get a spear. I'll have basically a plus one spear. Okay, so let me show you how this game controls. It's a little wonky. Instead of using, uh, as you can see, the, the camera, like if I just take everything off, the camera does not turn. So I basically turn with my mouse and kind of follow my character as I move with my other hand. So it's a little wonky, but we should be able to do it just fine. Especially after I get into the rhythm, because I plan on doing slightly longer episodes than I did for uh, Metro 2033. Because it's an RPG. You're going to get into it. At least that's the hope. Okay. So I'm planning on doing episodes that are 30 to 45 minutes. Maybe upwards of an hour if I can get the free time. I'm kind of, you know, at the mercy of the people around me. Who knows? But I hope you guys stick around and enjoy my Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights 2. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Later, guys.